Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Resonant Arcade. It is Wednesday night, and it's episode 15. We're talking about emergent gameplay today. As you can see, we've got the full team with us again today, which is good news. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hello. Yeah, again, kept you muted then, so I can actually get some words out. I think that was I a good one. I'm going to stop mentioning it soon. <laughs> I, I didn't make any noise anyway. Just, yeah, did you? To your no. control freak ball. Yes. You we're yes. all very respectful there, Chris. Thank you very much. Well, you're doing oh. well, guys, and I might stop unmuting you soon. I'll give you, I'm, I need to give you enough notice before we go live. Anyway, hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, the show. Uh, for those of you who don't know what the show is about, we talk about games in some degree, way, shape, or form, four English blokes talking about what they love. Um, so this week is actually uh, Lou's um, kind of child little nurturing the subject it's he my wants child to, the one he wants thing he wants to talk about all the time as you can see he still hasn't got rid of his uh, ridiculous porn stash but he's uh he's gonna i'm gonna let him and his mustache lead this episode because i don't know that much about this subject yes you do well it's not that i don't know it's that it's it's a fine line. It's it's hard to actually define what emergent gameplay is to me in my mind. I mean, well, m to me, d emergent gameplay is kind of finding a bug, breaking it, and then just and, and then kind of enhancing your game experience via by doing it. But you do, you could also say that just finding bugs and doing something that's completely outside of the window of the game scope is emergent. But yeah, I think I think I define it very um, very loosely. You know, the way I define it is doing things in the game that you weren't meant to do, or doing things in the game the that weren't planned by the people who made the game. That's okay, but it's the gameplay part. I mean, if I find a bug and I fall through the world, is that emergent? No, but that's not really gameplay either, is it? That's so just if, a bug. If I so find it's a, bug... a bug in the game that you can take advantage of, no, to it doesn't enhance have... your experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Emergent gameplay is just like I, I think. One of the um, one of the big ones at the moment is Minecraft because Minecraft has gameplay, but that's not why people play it. People play it for the emergent gameplay, for the things that you can do that the developers maybe haven't thought about. Such as, well, all the myriad of things that you can build in Minecraft. Like people who make Lego, you know, the guy, Lego company. Th is that they, emergent though? Because that the because, game is yeah. built to do that. It's it's like saying that's every single every, isn't it? yeah every single planet, sorry, every single level that's been created for Little Big Planet is emergent. Well, it is in in some respect. Every in, single the, the, map the, that I've ever created for a game is emergent in that respect. It it. If you are creating your own gameplay within a game that is is distinct from the goals of the game, that are set out quite obviously. Then I would class that as emergent gameplay. Yeah, but where where Minecraft's concerned, one of the mechanics of the game is building and mining. Mm. So it is, but they, that's doing what the developer intended you to do. Fair enough, you might be taking it to an extreme. It's your creativity at the end of the day, but it, yeah, the developer already gave you the tools to do that. Emer yeah. Emergent would be saying, right, let's take that mechanism that they've created and use it in a completely different way to how they intended it, which is which would have to be a broken game. In some respects, you know, let's all talk about it because it's the elephant in the room that we're all going to mention at some point, and it's the Quake Two physics. It yeah, has to, we, the Quake Two physics we talked about it a number of times. Bunny hopping, being able to speed yourself up as you're running, being able to like slightly angle your mouse around so you can circle jump a little bit further than you could normally jump, you know, that kind of thing. Rocket jumping. Double jumping, mm -hmm. yeah, but they are, rocket jumping. They aren't broken. It's just that that is the definition in my mind of emergent because rocket jumping, the developers programmed the rocket to have some kind of blast back, mm -hmm. in order to, you know, blast you back when you when you're getting hit by them in the game or whenever you fire them too close to yourself. But obviously, a, a Quake Two gamers took it further and started to use it to propel themselves off the ground and learned how much armor you'd need in order to t do a successful rocket jump. You know, it's it's one of those. But that's that that's emergent because that was p planned in the game, or the the mechanic was. No, hang on, not the it mechanic. Wasn't. See, it's so hard to define. <laughs> there, there's a, there was a really interesting thing that I read years ago called Zigzagging Through a Strange Universe, which was a, a basically a document written about the physics of Quake World. Um, and it described rocket jump, and it said that basically the developers put in a mechanic whereby, when you in, when you harm yourself with a weapon, yourself, you do half the damage, but you also get a kickback in the direction away from the, that 
harm. Mm. And it was saying how that doesn't translate to real life because otherwise hospitals would be very bizarre places with people flying around every time they got hurt by something. You don't get hurt in the hospital. That's not the point. <laughs> but is it? but the combination of those <laughs> two things, the, well, the combination yeah. of those two things, the fact that you take reduced damage and the fact that you you get a an artificial kickback from the weapon means that it allows you to go further. Rocket jumping wasn't it, just, it didn't start in quick. Uh, quick one either it actually started in doom um you can rocket jump across chasms in doom by shooting at walls uh, i'm gonna yeah i'm gonna say it wouldn't it wouldn't be the ground would it because you couldn't look down in the original like dogs can't look up <laughs> <laughs> so so it's, it's always been there and i guess it was kind of in the background of the minds of the um the, the guys who programmed quick one uh, john romero uh, tom hall and so on mm. but I they left it in it's a tricky definition going because you go from Quake back to Minecraft because emergent gameplay is it's sort of like making your own fun out of yeah. the game, whether you're exploiting the tools that they've given you in a way they hadn't intended, or just exploiting them in a way that wasn't specified. Because I... something like Minecraft is the idea, the general uh, objective of Minecraft because you can't really win at Minecraft, can you? Is just to keep going and, and get more materials and survive because at the night the zombies come, don't they? There is a there is a goal to Minecraft. There is a, you can complete the game by killing the Ender Dragon. That's right. Yeah. So th there is actually and this right. Is, okay. So this therefore, has been added. This has been added on. Recreating the Starship Enterprise, you know, where, anything like that, or the Game of Thrones world, that's definitely got to come under the version gameplay because no one. That's just no, what but, people have no, done. No, it's the not, very it name can. of the game, Minecraft. It's telling you a craft thing. You make things. Unless they give you a pre-prescribed list of things you can make, then as I said, that, that it's goes, not emergent. That goes back to exactly what I just said. What I just said, and both C and I have said, if every level I've ever created is emergent in that case. Okay, so let's 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 kind it's, of it, define it a bit more. I'd say that okay, building things in Minecraft maybe isn't emergent gameplay itself. In that the idea of the game is to build things, but what about playing games within the the world, hide and seek, and things like that? Having races and stuff, Minecraft, minecart races. That, Where does it become emergent? That I agree. It that that I agree is emergent. That is emergent because you are doing something in the game that the game wasn't built for. Well, it was built for it, but you're you're was it finding. Built for it, though? Yeah, well, there's minecarts in the game. There's uh, you know, the, it's it is a very blurry line there. But I think, I, the way I feel about it is that if you're doing something in the game in the game that's that's opposed on not opposed but separate from the goals that have been specified in the game your goal in that game is to, to eventually kill the ender dragon through a series of long-winded actions but when you go off on a tangent and start doing something else then it becomes emergent it doesn't suddenly become emergent but it, it transitions no, into emergent gameplay that, though the, the goal of mine in mind this particular instance or the goal of minecraft isn't to kill the ender dragon it's there as you said it was thrown on to the game Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not the goal of of playing Minecraft. To play Minecraft is to mine and to craft things. That to make things out of the world. It's like right. Okay, let's let's look at an example that I've got actual experience with uh, at, very recently. Uh, something in Terraria, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the the Obsidian generator in Terraria. And I don't think there was there's one in you can make in Minecraft as well. There is, yeah. There but is. you can make an Obsidian generator that uses lava and water and creates obsidian by mining it constantly now that even though we're mining the actual creation of, of obsidian is was not something that the developer into or infinite creation of obsidian was not something the developer intended obviously obviously a part of the mechanic of the game is obsidian lands on water lava what lands on water and it creates create obsidian blocks but the actual generator part of it wasn't part of the gameplay but I'm creating. I suppose that I'm, I'm talking myself out of it here. I'm creating <laughs> you are. something from I, the tools that the game gave I, me. I see what you're getting at. It's like the the mechanic was there to organically, if if you want to say, I create obsidian. What you've done is you've manipulated the mechanics in order to achieve something you want to achieve. Much so, more eloquent than I put it. Yes. Uh, did you did you enjoy it when you found out that you could do that? <laughs> did you enjoy it? Did you enjoy it? <laughs> Did, did you get a little hard? Would you would you consider that a game a gameplay feature? Uh, no, the gameplay features of Terraria are to build and to mine, exactly, and, and create different terrains. Hence Terraria, um, but 
there's lots of there's I mean as we know there's a lot more inter area than there is in Minecraft as from our experiences of it anyway there's bosses and all kinds of other stuff but it's still that as as Steve just put it that this is part of the game that already exists but I'm just taking the mechanic and going yeah, I, I I can't answer the enjoyment thing because I enjoy you know, all of the game you know yeah, exactly <laughs> I think I mean Minecraft is still hugely popular. Even now, I mean, I yeah, yeah. paid for the I paid for the beta about two or three years ago. No, no more than that. Four or five years ago, um, I paid five quid for the beta, and uh, I've still got an account now. Um, but it's twenty quid now to to buy as well. But people are still buying it, and people are still playing it. And if anything, the the audience has become younger now. It's kind of ten to well eight to ten year olds who are playing it. It's and it's still huge, and they're all finding their own fun in the game. They're not all doing the same thing. Ah, uh, well, here we go. We, we've talked about children having having much more creativity before. We all know that, you know. You, you, I, I took some Lego bricks out of my attic a few months ago and tried to build something. Mine just went no. Did you but... did you give up when you couldn't make obsidian from them? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but as soon as um, as soon as I. You know, if I was a kid, as soon as I got my Lego out, I could build anything and everything. You know, not just from instructions. I could just make something up. But now these days, I just don't have the the creativity for it. Interestingly enough, I was at a charity event a few weeks ago, and they actually had Lego on the tables. Uh, and I found that about a bottle and a half of wine gets the creativity with Lego back. There you go, mate. So drinking it's because you're, you're too loaded up with your own your own knowledge of how the world works everything else to actually just let it go um cynicism and, yeah you'd be, yeah you're too grown up basically to just have an unbridled sense of oh i can just make this because i think of it rather that is, than oh that, that wouldn't work this wouldn't work i need yeah, to do that isn't how a house that. works surely i need a, a roof on there or something surely yeah, a floor exactly. is important in a house <laughs> oh, <laughs> the sink no, doesn't go in kid. the window <laughs> Yeah, not I'll tell you what, six, I'll stick some not. legs on there instead. Whatever, you know. <laughs> and you'd still get fun out of it, wouldn't you? Exactly. So yeah, um, I think I think my definition of, of emergent is yeah, a mechanic that exists in the game, such as jumping in Quake Two, such as rockets in Quake Two, such damage, as, yeah. Yeah, obsidian like lava and blah blah, whatever. Uh, anything like that that you can twist to your will. Yeah, it doesn't I think feel glitches like it... count as well, though, don't they? Because well, certain speedrunners exploit glitches to, do, is... to beat the game, and therefore they enjoy doing that, do they not? That's a similar Yeah, but principle. enjoyment doesn't define whether it's emergent or not. It's gameplay. They play game the play. game. They, they've set their own goals, and okay. they use those glitches to get to those goals. Okay, so... I, I, did, I did kind of want to move it on to this, because I think if we talk about beneficial glitches, or glitches which have made the game more fun... Then we are onto something which I think we can all agree is solidly emerging gameplay. Depends on the glitch, oh. I think, in my in my Are eyes. We? Well, for Quake oh. Gone Quick, they exploited rocket jumps and all that kind of stuff to, to make the speed run more speedy. See, for me, a speed run isn't emerging gameplay. Because you're not you're you're training yourself to do that. You're not yeah, a, a speed run is just mm. doing the game as quickly as possible, taking advantage of whatever glitches you can. That isn't emerging gameplay in itself. It's but more what about, of a job, isn't it? Than, yeah. what, about game, what about games that don't have a timer? Now, there's people who have actually invented tools so that they can time games which don't have a timer. What? I think that speedrunning, if anything, is an emergent genre in itself. I think it's, it's, it's almost it's, the epitome it's, of emergent gameplay. It's not gameplay. because you can practically speedrun any game you want within a Of course reason. you can, but the, the, the whole speedrunning part of it is something... You know, some games actually have a counter. Some games reward you for completing the game quickly. But what, yeah, so sorry, then keep... it's intended by the developer, surely. You just said timer and counter. What are you talking about? Right, there is, there's, there's actually tools that speedrunners use to provide accurate timing hmm. um, for games that don't have a timer in them. You know, not all games actually tell you how long you've taken to complete a level or the Oh, right, you game. mean the end of game timer, right. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I was thinking, I've, I've rarely played a game that's got a timer on it. <laughs> no, there are certain games. I mean, Metal Gear Solid had it, didn't it? At the end of it, it tells yeah. you how yeah, long you you're took. You're right, you're right. But you yeah. you have no way... And, well, I suppose that would set the, the kind of standard, wouldn't it? But you you have no way of knowing what the developers are really actually timing. But if everyone uses the same timer, then it doesn't matter, does it? But the, the point the is that the, the timing games has become a big thing. And if you look at the speedrun community, I, I would say that that is an almost perfect example of emerging gameplay. It's 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 doing something. It's playing the games, but doing them in a different I, way to what it's I intended. have to. I have to agree with 
Lou there because if you say that rocket jumping and bunny hopping is emergent gameplay, then how is using rocket jumping and bunny hopping to do a speed run not emergent gameplay? No, it's the exact same thing. One's multiplayer, using and rocket one's single player. Part of it is emergent. They're, they're trying to do the game in as quick a time as possible. It's just something that people have always done. It is, but it's it, it's always been uh, a type of emergent gameplay. If anything, it's one of the oldest types of emergent right, gameplay. Uh, speed speed running, I think people who focus on it they go out of their way to find these glitches and find this emergence so they maybe are the pioneers of it when it comes to a, a particular game but <clears throat> i think in terms of what i think me and steve kind of seem to be on the same page here i think which is uncommon but i think i think we are. <laughs> um it's I, I think to me it has to be something that you can use in a uh, in a, maybe in a competitive way, in a match, or or maybe to to uh, to aid. Speedrun is competitive. I know speedrun is. is very competitive. I'm not okay, right? I think I think I kind of just said that. I think I think it probably has got some. Well, it's definitely got emergence in it. But I think I'm struggling here. I'm really struggling to. Are we looking define for a this. pure pure definition here? Yeah. Are we trying to cut, trying to turn nail this down as to what emergent gameplay is? Because I think it is quite a quite a loose a loose term really there's a couple of it's, definitions online but none of them really seem to hit the nail on the head of you they seem to be very very vague and quite abstract <clears throat> in the descriptions maybe, of maybe that's Emergent gameplay refers to a comp to complex situations in video games, board games, or tabletop role-playing games that emerge from the interaction of relatively simple game mechanics so what mm. me and Steve were saying basically fuck you Lou fuck you Thanks. <laughs> no, um, I mean that's, that's Wiki Wikipedia, isn't it? But yeah, that could be written by anyone. Yeah, but oh, I Jim, think Jimmy, you believe Jimmy Wills, but not your best mate. <laughs> Fuck you. I yeah, uh, um, I think that 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 kind of does sum it up for me. I think that is it's it's coming from it's... an already existing simple game mechanic that becomes more elaborate, more controlled by the player. Hmm. Yeah, and I'm not. You can use them mechanics to aid speedruns. But I don't think that speedrunning in itself is an emerging gameplay unless you are using one of these mechanics to your advantage, in which case then you're just using emerging gameplay to benefit your speedrun. I would but, say beating um, the game in as quick a time as you can is a type of gameplay separate from just beating the game. Beating the game in as quick a time as you can is something that has been around since the invention of video games. That doesn't make it not emergent, though. No, but it's intentional. So the people like people uh, want to complete games. Mario, Sonic, you go to that. You always had a timer, and <coughs> they ranked you on the amount of time it took versus the amount of coins or rings you collected, and that got your score. So it's an aspect of the scoring system within the game. Yes, time for games with been... a timer. With for games with a timer, for games yeah. without a timer, speedrunners still do Not all do games that. have coins. Not all no. games have rings. They've always got something to measure or to scale your um, skill at the game on. Whether that yeah. be the amount of kills you have, the amount of collectibles you get, the amount of rings, the faster time you do it. These are all things that are put in intentionally by the developer in order for you to gauge how well you're playing it. So Using them in well, itself doesn't make that emergent. What about not something in every like... game, so does that mean that if something... No, but every game so... has got... Something yes. to gauge but, 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 how well you do. Point is, does do emergent uh, gameplay mechanics differ depending on what game it is? Is, yeah, is an emergent gameplay mechanic in one thing, not in another, because there's no timer. Like, say, if you do a speed run in a game without a timer in it, does no, that then no, become emergent? No, no, but it's, no, but it's adding, not emergent. Adding, adding an artificial <laughs> timer onto a game is a load of shit. That is not. <laughs> that is not emergent gameplay. That has no, nothing to do uh, with emergent uh, gameplay. Emergent gameplay point, takes that. an existing mechanic and exploits it in one yeah. way, shape, or form. You may, as Steve just said, you may use multiple existing exploitations in order to do a speed run, but the speed run itself is not emergent. You may use emergent techniques to actually perform the speed run and get there as fast as you can. But and it takes skill. Really, I'm not saying it doesn't, but it's not emergent. I don't really see where the line is there because if you use emergent mechanics in a in an open world game to jump over an obstacle you shouldn't be able to get to to get to later in the game, that's the same principle as as exploiting things to do with speedrun. I don't really see where the difference is there. I really do not like that. Um, uh, what's that? Was it a picture that you put, Lou, where it says you're not supposed to be here? Yeah, or something like that. 
things That's like an that. Easter egg, though, isn't it? That is an Easter egg. Yeah, but I'm saying That's like if you not a merger using... and tough. I mean, like back to the question you asked, uh, like uh, the rocket jumping in Quake is emerging gameplay. Rocket jumping in a game where the programmers have put in rocket jumping specifically for you to use isn't emergent. So t- Team Fortress 2 rocket jumping isn't emergent. Isn't gameplay. emergent. It's emerged Quake 2 from rocket jumping. Emergent gameplay, but it is not. It's part of the game. It is a mechanic they added in on purpose. Interesting. Because that is, that, that is quite interesting. That means that the emergent gameplay depends on us knowing whether the developers chose to put it in on purpose which, or not. Which is very interesting in terms of did they actually mean to do rocket jumping in Quake 2? Because it's there Probably and did. it works, but I think and it was in Quake One as well. Yeah, yeah. So they, they kept it in the sequel. Is it and just a byproduct of a, a a physics system that they implemented that they didn't want to change? Well, I always say that, um, well, that I think some of the some of the success, most of the success, I actually think of um, of its games has been through the fact that John Carmack isn't actually a very good programmer. I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> because he's, he put all of these these weird mathematical bugs into the game which caused bunny hopping to work and wall strafing to work in Doom and things like that. Pure bugs that he does not like. He, do, he doesn't feel proud of those things. He, he's, not, he's not one of the person who sits up and says, yeah, our games had bunny hopping and rocket jumping them and that was great. He actually hates them. He wanted to get rid of them. And it was only because of pressure of the community that they stayed in. So that, so that can quite quite be quite pointedly be classed as a, a kind of emerging gameplay and uh, the community found that. Did they not nerf it at one point, the bunny hopping, I think? Did they not they did nerf in some it games. in one no, in a patch and then bring it back? I think possibly three point one eight. Something like that. I can't remember. Or three point one seven. But yeah, I mean and the community outcry was too much and it's like, right, I'm not playing Quake Two multiplayer anymore because I can't I can't practice at it and get good at it, you know? Get good <clears> at this it- emerging mate. Can I just take a few minutes just to talk about what, what it is? I mean, there's people here that probably know what bunny hopping is, but the the kind of bunny hopping and the, the movement mechanics in Quake are quite interesting. Quake, Quake 2, many first-person shooters, especially older ones, in that they require skill. It's very interesting. In, in, in a game, when you've got analog controls, if you push the analog stick all the way forward, you're moving at your maximum speed. If you can then find a way to increase that speed beyond the maximum speed then that's becoming even more analog. It's like learning to run faster. It's like training to be faster or or better at something. And that is a beautifully emergent mechanic, I think, because you can spend, you know, years of your life learning to get really, really fast or really good or really agile in these games. And it's hard to do. It's very hard to do. And if anything, isn't that just such an elegant emergent mechanic in itself in that it's not something you can just pick up and do. That yeah, well, as we can already tell because of the the abysmal effort that I I did last time trying to relearn how to bunny hop with a new config last uh, our last LAN party we had, and I just got absolutely trounced by Lou because he hadn't changed his config and he was as he was, and I'm <laughs> literally shooting the floor every five seconds instead of <laughs> bunny hopping because my I've changed everything round and my brain doesn't for some reason ten what well, however many years of playing Quake 2 constantly whenever I go into Quake 2 I want to go back to my old config but I can't because my fingers won't let me but anyway that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it but just no, like this... this... sorry oh, well, I was going to well, I was going to say, Sam, that one of the things that you put in is a Super Metroid bomb jumping which is a quite an old um, but famous mechanic I uh, saw so, um you what I wanted to talk about was not to go into specific examples of of exploits that are in games, because I think, to a larger or lesser degree, I think we've kind of hashed out the idea of what, what these things are. Like the mm-hmm. bomb jumping thing in Metroid, yeah, it is an emergent mechanic. You can use it to skip past getting the high jump boots, I think. But what I was going to get is, what, what talking has raised two interesting points. What is What was the guy from Quake called? John... Um, John, John, John Carmack. Romero. John oh, Carmack. So- uh, him wanting to get rid of those exploits um and then the community saying that you can't do that now that brings up an interesting thing about an author's ownership over material once it's been released to the general public whose game is quake once it's out there in terms of like the emergent mechanics de- might have defined it in some respects the, the eula, get, you can't the eula tells you who the game is quake. you what sorry the eula tells you who the game belongs to officially legally but it would be suicide <laughs> for a developer to, to say i to meant your, from to a your more friends. like I mean, from a more philosophical standpoint than who legally owns it. I mean, like, in terms of who has ownership of what that game 
is in terms of the third party collective consciousness of what Mate, everyone thinks of it as philosophy <laughs> game philosophy is a brilliant subject to talk about if you want to we want to have a show about that because there's, there's a lot that would of content be cool, yeah there. I don't it's part of this. It's part of this sub subject, though. Yeah, I'm not saying we can't talk about. It. I'm just saying that that it, that it's a quite a wide and, subject. And that leads on to the second point, which is kind of tangential to that one I just made. Is something like Team Fortress Two having rocket jumps as part of their mechanics means that the way that people have embraced an emergent mechanic has actually influenced how that genre has moved forward. That, and, and that comes back into the ownership that we the, the game makers make the games, and we make them make the games that we want them to make. By saying this is what we want or this is what we play, well, then, sort of. But then you get the then you get the um, the big triple A's that kind of dictate their games to us, and they don't really listen to us at the same time. Yeah. Uh, so you know it, it depends entirely who's developing the game, I think. Because I mean, there's a, there's been a lot of bugs that have come out of uh, multiplayer games, multiplayer FPS games, more recent modern ones. The, the developer considered exploits and cheats and have banned people from servers and and, yeah. and said that they can't even though they've fixed it they've still banned people you know it's been their fault they've actually banned someone from the server because they could exploit this bug because it was in the EULA because it was in the terms and conditions that they clicked and said yes to at the beginning I, I'm trying to remember the, the specific example there was something very recently that happened it's in the last six months I can't remember off the top of my head, but yeah, I, it does depend it on the lot developer. In MMOs. And... It does happen a lot in MMOs. I, it's, it happens a lot in World of Warcraft when people find an exploit to kill a really hard boss. Or um, get it's been happening money or something. F since um, the days of EverQuest. In EverQuest, they uh, introduced this, this dragon called the Sleeper, um, and you weren't meant to be able to kill it. It had like a billion health or something. And these guys found out a way to kill it. A, 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 a guild found a way to kill this, this Sleeper. It wasn't even ready yet. It dropped like a couple of copper coins and a rusty sword or something because <laughs> it didn't have a loot table set. And they all got banned because they were exploiting the game. You see, it's like, I, uh, I, you know, I, I, I consider those guys heroes. For if you, out if you use third party tools to hack a game or you modify the code to do something that, that, that yes, get ban them. They, they shouldn't be doing that. But mm -hmm. if they use something that's in the game that's the developer's fault, the developer should take, or the publisher, or whatever, should take the hit for that, it, whether it's financial or not, because it's their own fault. They've released dodgy software, essentially, there. The, the, the wider public are always going to exploit and exploit if, if to some people who, who won't. And, in fact, it has kicked off conversations on Twitter a number of times when these things have happened. And people are me going, oh, I can't believe it. And there's other people going, good on you. You know, it, it's such a divide, divided cat subject. It's the path of least resistance. I mean, I think I've mentioned this before a couple of times recently, but human beings will find the path of least resistance. Mm -hmm. You know, if there's a if there's a, a, a walk like a, a walkway with a piece of grass on it and you could you could walk and then turn ninety degrees to walk the other way, people will just walk across the grass. Mm -hmm. And you'll yeah. get this path developing on the grass where people are cutting that corner. But That's then, just what people they, do. Uh, are they sure called paths of desire? What's that sorry? Are they, are they called paths of desire? I'm sure Possibly. I heard that on QI. Now just quickly, this has just made, a bit dirty. just made me think about um, one other exploit that I've just recently found out about in Terraria again. I won't talk about this all night, I promise you. There's there's <laughs> a, a something called a hike lift, and I think you guys may know what it is, but if you put your character or, or somehow get your character stuck on top of a block that's at an angle, you'll you'll be displaced to the left or to the right of it depending on what, which way the angle is. Now, some people have built entire multiplayer servers as well that have got these blocks just lined up all the way across the map. So literally, you get you get near the block, you flip a switch with a, a mechanical, you know, set up a wire or something, and you just get literally shot across the map and with no consequences to you. But they haven't fixed that. It's a blatant bug and a lot of people are using it, but some people have built some really awesome tools with it. That is emergent. That is the definition yeah, of emergent. I'd agree. Because that isn't a re. I mean, it's not breaking anything, really, is it? I mean, it's it's oh, allowing it's them to get advantage of the mechanics. So well, if, it's if, actually if, taking if, advantage of something they've had to do in order to stop the game bugging out. If in that example, people found out a way to do that and have races, would that be emergent gameplay? Uh, yeah. maybe, yeah. Yeah. Don't see definitely. why not. 
got nothing so to do with speedrunning. So why is speedrunning not emerging then? Because speedrunning exactly speed 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 is. isn't doing anything. That's just <laughs> playing a game very fast. It, so is that? That's, that's, that's having a race. No, no, no. Emergent gameplay. Yes, but it, <laughs> I think, I think, I think, I think, I think, yeah, speedrunning exploits um, emergent gameplay. I think Steve was right when he said before, it itself is not emergent gameplay. It's exploiting emergent gameplay. I think that's okay. the that's the line, and that's the difference. Yeah, I just wanted to be a bastard. <laughs> it, I think speedrunners <laughs> try to do that. Ge so generally what? incorporate a lot of emergent gameplay into their speedruns. That we can yeah. agree on. What Potato Power has just uh, has just said that uh, in Guild Wars Two, people got banned for buying stuff at a store that had a bugged <laughs> price, basically. Yeah. And you know they've just bought loads of stuff that was cheaper. You know what I'd have done yeah. in that situation if I was a developer, I'd have contacted that person or those people or sent a mass mail out and said. There was obviously a, a bug here. We're going to let you off this once. This is a black mark against your account. If you do it again, you're going to get banned. Don't do it again. But why would it be a black mark though? Well, because it's a blatant, obvious bug, isn't it? I mean, they're getting they were getting items for it is a next bug, to nothing, but, probably. But they paid for a product. That product is bugged. That's not their fault. So if I go into the supermarket and buy, um, if, if you got twenty-four the cokes for a penny, yeah, and, and they priced something up incorrectly. Do the police come and arrest you for theft? Yeah, if it goes through the scanner and it's all right. Yeah, if you, say, then say it's if you, okay. Say if you, yeah, say if you grab like a, a DVD off the shelf that's meant to be 20 quid, yeah. but it scans at 1p, and then you buy it, you bought it, you've got a receipt for it. It wasn't your yeah. fault. It was the, it was Tesco's fault or whatever. It wasn't uh, your I, fault. Oh, well, that's I'm what gonna... I said about developers earlier. So, well, yeah, that's, that is the same thing. I'm gonna play I think that they... they Go on, sorry. I'm going to play devil's advocate here and say that the the um, economies of massive multiplayer games are very, very fragile. weak, very fragile. Yeah. So if someone's gone there and they bought a million things that are quite expensive things for nothing, yeah. they will go out no. and sell it, and then the the, yeah. the economy will get screwed in the game. I do believe that something needs to happen in order to rebalance it. But I don't think that the individual player should be penalised because of that. They should say, right, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to take these items off you. Mm -hmm. Because you weren't supposed to get money, but we're going to give you, you know, some thing. You know, here's a magic yeah. sword. Here's a plus two hat. They need to accept you know, responsibility for it instead of punishing yeah. the people that pay the money. I know at the end of the day they've still got millions of subscribers, but it's beside the point, isn't it? If I get, I've never been banned from a game or, or even warned on a server or anything like that. So I've been quite a good gamer my entire life, you know. But oh. there, are, there are people that do it consistently. Maybe there should be a central police for gamers. <laughs> the police game, the game police. You'd love that job, wouldn't you? I, I would be the commissioner, definitely. <laughs> and I'd punish the, my, the thing is, mate, I'd punish myself as well if I did something wrong. That's the difference between me and every other person that would be a commissioner. All right, okay. <laughs> the gaming referees. Do it right or don't do it at all. Nice. There was um there was a, there was a, something that interesting popped up a few weeks ago um which was a really I think quite a nice example of emergent gameplay but maybe emergent fun in a game which was a Metal Gear Solid Three video where some guy had basically just ran around trolling the guards and having fun I, I think Chris has got a clip of it um I think we've all seen this already before haven't we We have yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. it, it it's, it's really crazy. funny. Uh, yeah. I don't understand entirely what he's doing in a lot of instances, but it's kind of he's kind of doing a bit of a Benny Hill sketch in the middle of um, Metal Gear Solid Three. Yeah, uh, that's a quite a good way to describe it. Yeah, it, it, he's basically exploiting the enemy AI in order to just dick around. All he's doing, from what I can tell, it's not <laughs> like he's he's trying to get an end goal out of it, other than just. Pissing about for a laugh. Is, is that gameplay or is that performance art? Uh, hmm. <laughs> you're, you're playing a game, so I don't know. This is where this is. It's the gameplay, I think, that's the definition I'm trying. He's I'm not struggling with. He's not progressing forward in the game, though. But he's but still playing the game. So, he is. But yeah, so yeah he's Solid is uh, is known for its um, sort of Easter eggs. Not Easter eggs, but sort of things that you can do with exploiting the AI and things like that. Are there any example? Are there any examples you can think of of actual things that you would call emergent gameplay in Metal Gear Solid? Because it's, it's almost like the thought of everything. The developers have literally got every base covered in Metal Gear Solid, and things that you think you're doing, which are quite clever, it turns out that the developers are already ahead of you and have already done something yeah. to reward you for being clever. That, that's 
that's true. I think that's becoming more prevalent in a lot of games these days. Is they don't actually allow room for emergent gameplay, or not that I've seen that I've ever chanced yeah. upon and exploited. Um, a lot of like big budget AAA games, like say something like uh, The Last of Us or something. There's not really much opportunity for emerging gameplay in that game. No. It's quite well structured to not let you. You can do it at your own pace and all that kind of stuff, and it's quite open. But you can't really do things that the developers didn't intend you to do that I've come across. Invisible walls. That's what developers do. When when they can't think of a way out of it, when they just want to be sure that you are doing exactly what they've regimented that you do, they just stick massive invisible walls everywhere where you want to go. Just put a couple in my game today, actually. <sighs> you bastard. Or they kill you. you. They've actually, <laughs> what happens is when, when you touch them and you're, it, it's you that are do it, that's doing it, Lou, when you play <laughs> the game, it's going to explode. Like your computer. Right. It's going right, to explode okay. your computer. <laughs> that, that's Science. Fine. What's wrong with me? <laughs> no, but it is. I mean, that, that's one of the things that a lot of people run into. And one, the example I give the other week for one of the emergent gameplay things, it's really a small thing, but something that I class as emergent gameplay is that bit where you're in a game and you're not sure where to go or what to do. So you try and jump over a wall or you try and climb up something. And you start, you, you start like really struggling to do it, and you start thinking, this can't be a, the, the actual way that this needs to be done. And you'll run into an invisible wall, or you'll try and try and try, and then there'll, something will stop you that's artificial. And then you'll have to think of an actual, a proper way, which is a lot less fun. You see, the, the fact that um, some games don't fix these bugs or don't fix these these things that we consider emergent, I think is a, is a great thing. I think... Um, I think when developers put too much onus on their their games being perfect, it's a it's a bad thing. But at the same time, I can sit and complain about other developers that don't fix their bugs that are that are breaking the game. You know, bugs and emergent gameplay, I think, are two distinctly separate things, aren't they? You they can are, have but a it's glitch also... that you know, or you can categorize a, a bug as a glitch. I think can go, oh, that's cute or whatever, <laughs> and it's use also, it. To... It's also a. a, a, a from the viewpoint of who's looking at it really I mean if you think about the guys who created Skyrim watching um, you know a, a, a speed run where someone completes Skyrim in 20 minutes and they're thinking we've made a game which has got 50 60 hours of gameplay and someone's done More it in 20 that. minutes they, they would be thinking that that's broken we need to fix that hmm. and they do go in and fix these things yeah but that's not emergent gameplay no, I'm not. I'm just saying that that what you're talking about there about about bugs not being fixed or bugs that should be fixed. It depends on your point of view. A lot of people would be a lot of people would be saying, leave those bugs in. We want to try and get even faster. Whereas the developers say, no, those are definitely break, get, breaking the game because you're not playing the game properly. I think if, yeah, it, if that's if a symptom of uh, of modern gaming, isn't it, where all developers have to do is release a new patch. Mm. So that in itself is kind of. It saw a bit of a decline in unintentional emerging gameplay. They fix it. Because, yeah, any bugs that do come up that you can take advantage of do tend to get fixed. But as I just say, I feel like that this, it's getting very pretentious. I mean, a lot of these developers now are, are very much subscribing the way that you play the game. They're saying down to, you know, where you walk and stuff. Mm. Well, I don't like yeah. I'm, I'm very not, I'm not keen on that kind of uh, restriction in games, though. Well, I'm not Me either. It, it's the same. It's the same idea. This is what's about the ownership of, of of property. Once it's been released to the general public, it becomes the public's property in terms of like you've let us get engaged with that. I mean, a really obvious example of this is the is the uh, the updated special effects versions of the Star Wars films and how the original 1970s cut has not been made available the commercial release. Um, on Blu-ray or whatever. I don't know if it's going to happen, but do you know what I mean? Like how George Lucas was like, no, these are my films and I'm going to go and change the release of yeah. versions. It's like, they're not your films. That film that was released in the 70s that everyone fell in love with is the, is the public's property, like as, as part yeah. of our collective consciousness and our pop I mean, culture it's, heritage. It's like Vincent van Gogh, like, you know, coming back and saying, nah, actually, you know, the Mona Lisa's not quite finished. You're supposed to have a tash. And drawn it. I should hope not, since you didn't originally pay for it. Yeah, I was going to say, wasn't that Leonardo? Sorry, I was explaining I'm very tired. That'd be real. That'd be real. <laughs> Vincent van Gogh coming yeah, yeah. back and sewing his ear back on uh, and yeah, then yeah. painting himself again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
You know what I mean. Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah. I, know, I, I don't I, really I, like those sunflowers. And I like walked right into that. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah, it's, uh, you're, you on know, show, I, you're on a show with three pedantic syndrome. bastards, so you're, you're yeah. going to get picked up on that, I think. Um, yeah. Mythalor just mentioned in, in the chat that some games are officially speedrun on older patches simply because the best exploits have been patched out. That kind of fits in what we just said there, that, that people yep. are going going back to older versions, and that's because they feel that that's the right version to do it on. That's that's their version, almost. The true <laughs> yeah. see, version. I think if, uh, if for example, the, uh, the infinite water glitch in um, uh, Interaria broke, or didn't didn't make infinite water anymore. There'd be no point in me having my little reserves because it's it would be a nightmare to get it unless I plumbed water up from somewhere. But you know that would annoy me a little bit if they removed that because I use it. But should I be using it because it is really a bug, isn't it? It's, do you remember um, Syndicate Water Slow? Yeah. Um, where you used to be able Bondly. to indoctrinate a load of people, give them all LRA rifles, and get fifty people within one vehicle. And then yeah. basically take down any enemy. Yeah. That was a massive exploit. There was a, that was emerging gameplay, which but we used like, to massive advantage. It's and not we like they would didn't see that coming. That there, was, there was no reason why they couldn't have just said, you can only have five people in a car. But for some reason, they just allowed you to have every person in the entire world in one car. Was it? It would have been easy to fix. Or was I, it the fact that, that a bullfrog at the time had about seven people under, on their payroll? And they had a, 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 a deadline to meet, and they just didn't test it properly. That's Bullfrog all over, though, isn't it? But all of Bullfrog's Lately. games had massive bugs in them, to the point where Magic Carpet 2 basically didn't work. It crashed on every computer. Um, I remember uh, I, like <laughs> obsessing over that game. Never actually played it, but wanted to play one of at least one, one of the Magic, Magic Carpet, Carpet is games. Brilliant. Brilliant game. I was like, what, Open world what, the as well. world's awesome. The world and is massive. Brilliant. It, talking about emerging gameplay, in that, in that game, although you've got the spells to basically do things like create um, massive craters or volcanoes and stuff, you basically decide how you complete each mission. You know, the mission is you've got to kill this wizard, or the mission is you've got to collect so much mana, or the mission is you've got to kill this giant dragon or something. But how you do it is completely up to you. And that was done on purpose. So that kind of isn't emerging gameplay, but <laughs> in the same way it is because you completely have free reign of how to do that game. Hmm. Well, that's a different mm-hmm. thing. That's that's choice. It yeah. is. It is. Choice because it is. Choice is often something that is implemented very, very deliberately, isn't it? Killing a dragon by spawning an infinite amount of volcanoes underneath him by taking advantage of a game mechanic would be emergent. Yeah, and that's how one of the ways no, you can do it. No, that would be game breaking. <laughs> Why? It's, that wouldn't be fun. Well, that's, that's your fun. opinion, mate. Well, no, but, but surely, in, in order for it to... It? Oh, God. What if, so what, if, what, if the, what if the fun that you derived from was the fact that you figured out how to do it? That, that's fun. Figuring out... Uh, solving a problem is fun. Games are about solving problems, aren't they? Well, Fundamentally. Most games about, that I enjoy are quite you, complex, yeah. Yeah, but the reward you for it, you don't have to be complex. You know, solving a problem could be just getting to the end of the level. You're solving a problem, and yeah. how do I get to the end of the level? Um, and although there's skill involved, there's also there's problem solving in any game. It could be said that the games themselves are basically fun problems. Yeah, well, of course they are. That, that definition is, is itself going through some changes because they say that the traditional. Um, definition of a game is it's got to have a fail state to qualify as a game but we have seen games released that don't have that so that is possibly changing but that's a subject for another it time it is yeah and mm. that that's again probably some of the um, some of the more ambitious games going for storyline and things like the Call of Duty series uh, you know it's not about solving problems in Call of Duty it's about this, this hard hitting story about soldiers and beautiful graphics and by the way, you yeah. can collect a million guns if you spend a trillion hours on it. Um, yeah. One gun per thousand hours. I don't Some, know what it is. Someone's yeah. put in the. Um, someone made a note of um, the Stanley Parable. Yeah. That's... Just as a just as a Stanley Parable, it gives the illusion of emergent gameplay of not doing what you're told, but of course you're just playing within the game's parameters. Yeah, that's because I, I played it slightly. I'm like, I just thought that was an interesting, yeah. I mean, that's... maybe a comment on on it, <clears throat> what gamer choices and what how much agency you have within a set of rules that the gamer, the developer, is giving you. But then you've got then you've got this um, things like the uh, Radiant AI and Oblivion, whereas that 
that was surely, truly emergent. What do you mean the radiant AI? Can you the, right, explain? okay, so I, I think Lou's said this a few times before. Uh, I'm, I'll repeat it for the sake of it. But um, what happened is that when, when Oblivion was designed, they, they created this radiant AI system. And the radiant AI system was basically so random and so clever that entire towns would be wiped out by mobs and enemies while you weren't there. And, you, you know, an entire town had burned down or they'd get attacked by wolves and all the guards would get killed. And you'd turn up and it'd be like, okay, where, where, where are all the merchants? But it was part of the game. and But they considered it break, game-breaking. So they they stopped it. And it, and it is game-breaking when you think about it. Because if I go into a town that's supposed to have people in there with quests and items and yeah, everything and all else... the NPCs are dead. Yeah. But... What? It makes it more realistic, though, if you were in a in a does it though sort of medi medieval set fantasy world. Yeah, yeah there does. are going to be groups of bandits that are occasionally going to destroy towns and stuff. But I, if you've you got know. a if you've got a if you've got a goal in the game and you're trying very hard and it is very 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 hard for the uh, the guys at Bethesda to um to get the game to even work, considering how much how loose the kind of gameplay is. If you've got a like a, a an NPC in the, the village who you need to talk to to complete the game, and you go to that village and they've all been killed by wolves, you're going to be pissed off, especially if you got there after like eighty hours of gameplay. But even if they even if they made that NPC so they, you know, didn't die, they just which they do. This is what they do. Yeah. The, the basically the only way the, the way to combat that is to make them un unkillable, which Simple. becomes really crappy because it's like there's those guys in Morrowind who you hit them with a sword that does a trillion damage. There's a trillion again for you, and they just fall over onto the knees and then get back up again. It's like okay, that should have killed you. All right, you're you're an important NPC, so yeah. I can't kill you. And then the game's ruined. It's like I want to kill the, you. But the game would be ruined if you killed the NPC. If your goal in the <laughs> game was to get to the end, how many people would com complain and go, "Oh, I didn't know that that NPC that I killed earlier was part of the main <laughs> quest." I've, That'd I've be well a... annoying, surely. I remember in Morrowind killing an NPC and um, they come up with a message saying um, you've killed whoever he is. Um, you yeah, can probably. either restart or you can continue into the dark future that you've created. Yeah, that, that rings bells. That's yeah. cool. Which basically meant that you can continue to play the game but you fucked it. Yeah. I think that, I think you could kill certain NPCs in Morrowind and, and yeah. that would happen. Yeah, I remember that myself. Um, it is See, interesting on that. I'd rather be given that choice than than have the invincible uh, NPC personally. But, uh, we've already talked. I've talked about it before with like the kids, you know. Yeah. Being able to stab kids. kids in these games. Uh, that, that, why? Why not? I think that's probably why Rockstar don't include them in their games. Yeah. Because they just go, you know what? We can't. They, they at least they go. Well, it's not realistic to not have any kids in in San Andreas, but uh, it's better than. Letting, they'd rather not have them than sacrifice the freedom I, to kill anybody. I never you know noticed. I, mean? I never noticed that GTA didn't have kids. Nope. Never was. Wasn't looking for kids. No. Never no, once you're not, noticed you're not. that. But when, when you put them in Skyrim, available. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then when you put them in Skyrim or Fallout, and you can't kill them, it then, yeah, yeah, yeah. You notice, don't you? Because they put them there. The fact that there aren't any kids in GTA has never bothered me, and I would never expect them to put them in. Because I'd be like, well, you know, given what I like to do in GTA, it's not a good idea. But as soon as you introduce you know, something like that, you're un unintentionally introducing a prejudice in the game. Yes, exactly. And you, you, you're inviting immersion to be broken by the fact that you, they're not. You can't kill the children in, in the most games that they're featured in. Not that I know all of them, but that therefore goes well. I can kill anybody else, so why not? Yeah. What yeah. makes children so special? I'm still trying to define this in my head, and I think um, after, I, I did a quick search on Tinterweb just before we started the show, and it seems to be there's a lot of memes out there, memes Meme. out there for. Memes. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of your mum out there for. Um, <laughs> she gets all over my mum. For emergent gameplay, one mem in particular that I've uh, I've I've put on the. What are you doing? <laughs> All right. Strangling you. One mem in particular is um, the, uh, the one I put over Sam's face on the, the video that everyone can see that you guys can't. And it's just a, a Metroid one saying, let's discuss <laughs> emergent gameplay. Yeah, I saw that. But, uh, <coughs> What's the picture of? It's, um, 
What is it? Samus. How could you say Samus squaring up against some? No, it's not. Yeah, it's Samus and there's some big monster behind her. No, no, he's coming oh. out of a. He's coming out of a. a, a area. That's a, he. That's a uh. door. She. Sorry. Yeah, you you know more than anyone that Samus is a woman. I know. I know. I'm sorry. Because Chris is Samus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. So I mean, I, we I said uh, earlier we could go through listing all of the different games and bits of emergent gameplay that we've ever come across, but I'm not that sure it's worth it. I'm not sure it's no. worth doing that. I mean, there are there are some. I, I still like the. I, I still one of the th things I most like about emergent gameplay. The thing that I most enjoy that is classed as emergent gameplay is the exploiting bugs thing you know the movement stuff especially um, ever since I read that article god knows how many years ago now I love the idea that there are people out there that are actually doing research into the physics of games and if they're still figuring stuff out about Quake physics even though the source code has been released for ages you can go in and read exactly why this works there are still people finding new things out about it and that's years and years and years after the games have been released. And you you don't get that from every game. Not no, every game not. has that flexibility within it. I I think again we we kind of covered this. We said that um, even though there is a there's a much more stringent Q and A process involved in games these days, there's still it still lacks in other areas. So the actual. I suppose the older games where they didn't have as many people developing on the team, as you said with Bullfrog earlier, that maybe didn't have enough time to put to fix all these bugs. But when they got the time, we, we, is, we're already the the community's already accepted it and they're happy with it. Is it one of these things where back in the day, if you wanted to make a game, you started from scratch, you know, brass tacks, you made your engine. Mm. Games these days share engines, and they're engines that have been proven in the market. Yeah. Right, so yeah. the the games that have streamlined mechanics, things that work properly, the physics work properly, they've been tried out in loads of different scenarios, different settings. So the the bugs that would lead to emerging gameplay are removed before the game developers even get their hands on their engine. Whereas which, the likes of Quake, which was developed with a bespoke engine for that game itself, was kind of shot together. Yeah, I mean, Quake's built on the the engines, the buggy engines of the past. Mm. Um, even you know the the recent Source games, stuff like Team Fortress Two, is built on the Quake One engine. Uh, I was going to say something there. I mean, how often do you get a new engine coming out these days? You don't really. <laughs> Everything's Unreal Engine, Quake Engine, Source, Cry Engine, uh, Cry Engine, and, and not all indie games are. Unity. Unity or Game Maker or yeah. um, XNA. Mm. I don't know, I was, that's what I was going to say. It, it, if anything, it's quite a big shame that, to be honest, that that, that, <clears throat> that succession of generational QAs led to games which are pretty solid and pretty perfect and don't right. really have any flaws. It, that sounds counterintuitive. <laughs> it, it's yeah. a shame that all these games work so well. Yeah, it is because the, the, you know, like I say, the re one of the reasons I think the Quake was so good is because it had real bugs that were, <laughs> but you not know, game breaking, breaking bugs. We played uh, uh, Rainbow Six a while back, and that had some bugs in it that were just just made the game intolerable to play. Yeah, when they occurred, I mean they were rare, but when they occurred, it, it was a problem. But the the things like the mechanics i think it's a very fine line isn't it as to what as a developer you will fix and what you want but also that uh, i keep saying this there's 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 a studios out there that don't fix the bugs properly and I think fix it's going important back, bugs as well I, I think it's going back to what sam said i think that the when when game when the ownership of the game is taken into the public domain and the, the community dictates what it is about that game that makes it great that's normally at odds with what the developers think makes the game great. Id Software, I don't think, really completely understood what it was that made their game so popular. That's a creative mind thing, though. Slash hates um, Sweet Child of Mine, you know? It, it, that, it, creative people tend to hate the most successful things. It's sometimes a bit cool to hate the most successful things, I think. You know, mm. the fact that uh, the jo if I didn't know John Carmack didn't like the fact bunny hopping existed. I mean, as a programmer, 
I suppose I can understand that, but I think I'd also be very flattered that somebody on the planet, one person or millions of people, have put effort into learning how to exploit something that I've made a mistake on in order to make their experience better. That, yeah, but that's not how everyone sees it. I mean, the, he would see it as, oh, no, I'm famous and my game is famous for a mistake that I made. Not because I'm great, but because I made I fucked up. That, no. that would that would great on you. Well, that's, all right, fair enough. If that's his opinion, I'm sure it isn't his opinion. But if that if that is his opinion, then he's he's doing it for the wrong bloody reasons. In that case, you do it because you you love you love producing something for other people to play. Surely. Yeah, but you also do it because you love the idea that you're doing something which is is clever or you know impressive or you've done. You know what? Some, you have actually you you've 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 made a, a conscious decision to make this game good. Not. I've made uh, an all right game that's become much better because I've made some mistakes in it. That just means you're famous for being rubbish. But a lot of artists are famous for mistakes that they've made. Yeah, and I'm sure that a lot of them don't like it either. Possibly, but, <laughs> but that's, it's not that's, for them to say, is it? Exactly, that's the point I was making. Once it's out, once, you know, I mean, I'm not saying that third party perspective is, is how you should rule everything in your life because it's not but certainly not if if, not. If, a, if if a million people say that this painting is great because of that little scratch that, that the artist inadvertently put in the corner then that is essentially what makes that painting great as mm, far yeah. as everyone is concerned i know that everyone's own individual interpretation is going to be slightly different and the artist is going to be another thing again entirely but it doesn't make it that, that, that those other million people's general viewpoint isn't valid or isn't the correct way to look at it. This is, you know, this is why once a game's released, it's just why the patching thing becomes a bit of a, an issue because yeah. if they continuously patch something, it's like George Lucas going in and putting CGI and Jabba and extra bloody spaceships in every scene. It is just <laughs> constantly meddling with something that we've already kind of said that we liked. Like yeah. we've already said, we've already into it. You don't have to keep meddling. Whereas a game-breaking bug does need patching. So yeah. it, it, it is. It's a subjective thing as well. Even though I just talked about third-party perspective, it's entirely subjective. Also, so imagine you were a Quake Two player and you really, really enjoyed playing multiplayer Quake Two, and then some of these people started bunny hopping and circle jumping, uh, and you couldn't do it for whatever reason. I mean, categorically, could not figure out how to do it. Right. You would you would be annoyed, wouldn't you, that these are, that this bug exists and these people are exploiting it? Cry me a sure, fucking river. I'm uh, sure there are plenty of Quake players like that out there that probably got turned off that game for that exact there, reason. There are, and it, you know that's like saying you know the Olympics shouldn't be there because I can't run the hundred meters in ten seconds, so therefore <laughs> no one should be allowed to do it. Well, yeah, that is spitting your dummy out the pram, but it is. Just don't well, there was a thing, wasn't it? There? there was. Um... <laughs> In, in in the latest Olympics, um, with Oscar Pistorius competed with his blades, there was a lot of people complaining about that. Yeah, because he was faster, wasn't he? They reckon he had a, an advantage. Well, he still came last, but <laughs> if <laughs> he did, but yeah, okay, but uh, people had issue with him running with a different, I don't want to say technology, but with a different method to what everyone to what other people were able to do. And no one was able to run like him apart from him because he had his blades. Now, it turns out that didn't give him that much of an advantage. But if it did, if, if he would have won that race, I reckon he would have had his medal, uh, his, well, his medal stripped off him. Well, well, this take, is like... it, take it to the next degree. What if someone has fully like, bioengineered robotic legs that are stronger and faster than human legs and yeah. runs in a race with Usain Bolt and kicks his ass? Well, yeah, you had cyborg legs, mate. You know what I mean? Like, it's <laughs> yeah. not fair. <laughs> so yeah, there's got to be some. There's got to be some level leveling out of the game. Yeah, yeah. But then yeah. The, the, the body hopping thing doesn't come under that because just because that person can't learn that technique doesn't mean that it, they don't have the a bit like. <laughs> oh, I mean, to the point with uh, you know with the bionic legs. Fair enough. Hussein Ball couldn't beat the you know half man half machine guy with his normal legs, but he's got enough money to get his legs amputated and get bionic legs <laughs> of his own put on there. It's true, I suppose. <laughs> It'd very quickly become like Formula One, wouldn't it? It'd have to be completely regulated. Everyone yeah. would have to have like the, there'd be a constructors' championship for legs. <laughs> yeah, that's. It, 
But yeah, going back to the the, the gaming <laughs> thing and the bunny hopping thing, yeah, and I, I kind of know what you mean, Sam. In that, that, although there's there's nothing physically stopping you from doing it. It's just a case of are you willing to put into practice to learn how to do it? Yeah, exactly. I think it's a it's the same as if uh, if a snooker player is able to get you know a superb um, rebound off the ball that they want to get the position that they want, and I can't do it. Well, I'm not going to say that that snooker player shouldn't be able to do that because the that exploitation of the physics of the the ball and the table and everything is mm. there to be made. They are, they're better at the game than me then, aren't they? It's yeah. like, um, I have to concede that point. It's like, uh, something I read in the news, it was a couple of years ago, but it kind of like wound me up a little bit. And it was about um, kids' sports days and about how these days uh, that you no can't. one, is, yeah, there's, there's, there's no <laughs> one allowed to lose. Yeah, Ev- Everyone's got to be a winner. You get like, a competitive like, no, badge no, or don't no. you? You get a competitor's badge or a... Or a- yeah. A part, take part E or you've got to lose is. to be able to know that you have to do better <laughs> yeah, if, yeah if you don't yeah. lose at something what's driving it to improve there's, there's always got to be people that kick your ass and we sh- except what's motivates you to think right I need to fucking up my game and right? we should still have the cane oh yeah <laughs> only cane. it should be made of metal <laughs> yeah only it should be made of it's just a rebar <laughs> <laughs> it should be a concrete reinforced bar <laughs> Yes. And you have to take it across the top teeth. Welcome to Resonance oh. Arcade, where we talk about capital punishment. <laughs> For kids. For kids. Yeah. We can't stab them, so we just want to hit them. Corporal the punishment, not capital punishment. Sorry. Capital is kill them. Yeah. Capital as well, if they're bad enough. <laughs> well, what about you? Cheating in your homework. Throw that in the mix. <laughs> Gallows for you. If they really won't shut up and it's getting a bit late, yeah, capital punishment. <laughs> okay. You will go to sleep. Forever. Oh, you'll be dead. <laughs> <laughs> right. Anyway, guys, uh, are there any other things that you guys want to talk about? I feel like we're uh, we're running low on on categories here. Um, some some you put in these Dark Souls multiplayer. Yeah, I don't know if it if it now that we've talked it over, I, I don't actually agree with that anymore because basically <laughs> Dark Souls multiplayer, it's it's a strange multiplayer, and I would sort of recommend having a go at it just because it's unique. But you, you, you invade somebody's world because everyone you're in the game and the game is just the game. You can then pick up certain items which let you invade another person's game. So you just then turn up in their world and then you kill them, you get their, you get some stuff or rewards or if they kill you, they get rewards. Now there's ways that you can go about doing that but that's, again, the way that the game is set up, I think the developers intended it to be that way. Like you've got gestures so you can go up to someone and bow before you fight them. Now they put that gesture in there so they intended that that is something you can do, or you can just sneak up behind them and stab them. Again, this is this is to do with the gamers making a choice, but these are choices that the developers let you make. So, so about, I don't think it is emergent. What about the the fact that developers? Th- th- this is slightly emergent. This is uh, uh, even even more obscure. So, in that game, you can leave notes, can't you, for people? Yes, that that's no. funny. But again, that's that's stuff that developers might have. They they, they left it in. Now, did they leave it in? In I I've read quite a few inter- interviews with From Software, but I can't remember if they've ever mentioned it. Did they leave it in so people could help each other out and not really think it through and go, oh, actually, people could put some misleading facts in there? I don't know because it's it was in Demon Souls and they kept it in Dark Souls and it's the mm. same system essentially because basically how the note systems work is that you select a select number of parameters so you can say things like dot 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 ahead so you could put you know cliff ahead monster ahead um amazing item ahead this that and other. then people started to make joke things out of it like there's a there's a one bit where you meet this big goddess looking one with huge tits basically and you could put you could put things like amazing something ahead and one of those items is like you know monster or chest so someone wrote on the floor <laughs> amazing chest the head now that's just funny you know but it's not, there's loads of stuff like, there's loads of things out where there'll be like a cliff it'll say try jumping off because you can do that in some areas and you'll find secret loot you can put it on cliffs that you'll die you jump up and die and it's like right <laughs> cheers so but is that frustrating in the game it's it is like when you first start playing what a, a souls game and you come across like you're gonna be like oh fuck you man but then you just gotta go and be like well this is the game that i'm in and it is the game is supposed to be kind of ruthless like people will sometimes help you out like some notes are there and you can up thumb a vote so sometimes people will up thumb a negative one just to be a troll so yeah. you might get one of this try jumping off it's got 100 up votes and it still kills you anyway <laughs> so this it's kind of like it's a weird sense of community of 
everyone's out to fuck each other over, but not they're not always. They're like med- some people are, some people are friendly, some people aren't. But it's kind of all fair. It's Just all like in the game. Life. Like well, that, that the same thing applies in like I've mentioned it before a few times. Daisy where people will sometimes be really nice to each other and then other times they'll just loot each other's corpses. You know, yeah. the- I watched a video of Daisy uh, Monday, I think, um, and it was someone who was sneaking up on a group of people that were camping in the middle of the woods and had actually got a Predator soundboard <laughs> and they were playing the noises and he was just watching them from a distance. He was running around playing the noises and then watching them completely freak out from a distance. <laughs> I didn't kill them, just tortured them for half an hour. Brilliant. That's emergent. That's a bit. Isn't, isn't having the Predator soundboard a mod? But, hasn't he done that himself? Uh, no, well, no, it's, it's just audio because you, you have a mic in the game and you can do whatever you want with it. So surely that is a oh, mechanic right. that he's exploiting yeah, to enough. a. So I, I didn't know that. No, yeah, that part of the game is that you can talk to each other and there's actually proximity from where you are. So if someone's over there, that. you can hear them. Um, that is emergent there. then. That's that's cool. I like that. I so he's got saw... his own sound effects playing through his mic. That's pretty clever. Yeah. I can't remember the name of the game off the top of my head, but when I first started doing some game dev, I saw someone, in fact, Lumen or um, doing a, a walkie-talkie. It was like a Counter-Strike, but you actually have a physical walkie-talkie where you could talk to people and you could hear people talking to people on the uh, on the walkie-talkie. So you could hear them talking to their teammates or you could hear the teammates oh if they yes were close. It was, no it was an indie game it was yeah, indie it was game. an indie it was, game basically the whole the, it was a first person shooter a bit like counter-strike but the the main mechanic was the sound worked just like in real life hmm. so you could eavesdrop on people talking the walkie-talkies and if you if you whispered you were less likely to be heard than if you shouted and it, it had all proper things like echoes and and muffling walls and stuff like that it was a really interesting mechanic yeah that's a cool idea and that kind of makes it more realistic because let's say if us four were to re- really go out with a bunch of guns and try and kill four other blokes, we would have to physically talk to each other. And if someone snuck around and heard us, that would be real. Whereas in a game like, say if you've got team chat on a first-person shooter, then it's not it's not in-game, is it? So that's quite... I like that idea. I don't know, yeah. I don't know about you, mate, but I'd, I'd do it all on my own. I, don't, I wouldn't need to speak, any, speak to anybody. I'd just ninja my way around. <laughs> I'd probably kill you guys first. <laughs> the nick our guns and then run off with the ammo. I'll probably kill myself. With all by four mic out, with all four walkie talkies, having a conversation with myself. <laughs> I'll probably walk into a guard by accident. Another is it another one um, for you to think about. Role playing in, in RPGs and certainly massively multiplayer on online games. Um, is that emergent? I used to role play in EverQuest. I used to basically type. In the accent is. of the dwarf character that I played, so I did this kind of phony Scottish sort of accent called it, addressed everyone as wee laddie and stuff like that. Um, and I used to really enjoy it, and and there was a lot of people who did that in EverQuest. Like everyone who played as a tr- um, you an were, ogre, you could go on specific um, role play servers. There were as role well. play servers as well, but there were certain certain people who would play. I think I can't remember a single person who played as an ogre character who didn't <laughs> talk <laughs> like a, yeah. you know like a simpleton almost me, me think, hungry me go back yeah, yeah. I, I don't think that's emergent because people were doing that with you know like dungeons and dragons people used to go on dressed in costume and do Although, it like, that's just according to the definitions of emergent gameplay that i've looked up in dungeons and dragons is kind of the proto the proto emergent gameplay game yeah. where was people... that not because there are things you could do in the game as opposed to the, the clothes that you wore well, these are things, Steve. This this is one of the things that I did just before I stopped playing EverQuest. Is I went to one of the kind of starting cities, and I started to do my own ad hoc quests for newbies. So I was basically there's some corrupt guards in the city, and there was there was good guards, and I was identifying yeah. the corrupt guards who were very low level, and getting the um, the low level players to kill the guards and bring me back their weapons or their items. And I give them a reward worth way more than what it, it was actually worth. So I was doing this just. I remember for the doing something of the like that. Something, that's, something like that. That's not emergent, though. I but that's, think that, that is. Well, is it's, it? it's like role playing, though, isn't it? And I think I think role playing. Yeah, but role playing possible. isn't emergent gameplay. That's just role playing. Well, yeah, it's, I think role playing is what you're supposed to do. Experience. You're assuming was, a role, which is kind of what's implied by yeah, the game. Yeah, I suppose. But I was getting them to. But I was getting them to do things in the game that ordinarily you wouldn't do. No, you were getting them to do That's... things in the game that you wanted them to do, not that yeah, it was, but but, they, but it was also anyone is capable them. of going and killing a low-level NPC. They are, but the you just is... give them some for doing it. Yeah, exactly. But I was basically then contributing to the same sort of thing that they would be doing if they were doing a normal quest. They That's just like us playing some, like Borderlands, and me saying to you, "Tell you what, 
you claw the enemies on this level, I'll, 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 I'll give you this gun I've got. What? What? So why isn't that emergent gameplay? You're, you're setting a game for me inside the game. I'm not setting a game because you're still playing the game. I'm just rewarding you differently for playing the game. Yeah, but I play the game to get rewarded. You've adjusted the parameters of the game, but you're not exploiting something that the developers didn't intend to happen. But I don't, you know, that's I don't, the point, isn't it? <laughs> I still think that that's emerging gameplay, though. If you're if you're doing playing a game within the game. Well, the the definition on hmm. wiki, remember, said that it was um, it refers to complex situations in video games, board games, or tabletop role playing games that emerge from interaction or relatively simple game mechanics. Let's keep reminding oh, well. ourselves of that. So, so yeah, let's let's remind ourselves of Jimmy Wales' perfect definition. So, a simple a simple game mechanic in EverQuest is that it is a role playing game. Therefore, you can or cannot assume a role. That's not a mechanic. That's a genre. Well, it's a genre as well as a mechanic in the game. They they give you the tools to become a. Yeah, role playing isn't it itself barbarian. a mechanic? It a, is if a you, mechanic if you select... is the ability to be able to go on a quest and pick up a sword and hit someone with it. It is if you select a role playing server. Yeah, but plus, the, I mean, the abilities that each uh, race or role has is something to do with the mechanics of the game, isn't it? If you pick a dwarf and they can do one thing and a warrior can do something else. But you don't have to roleplay to do that. I see. I kind of see where Steve's coming from again, but I... It's... I could sit down and I could play... I don't know. Um, I want to say Borderlands again, because my mind's going blank. And I could dress up as my character and assume the same accent. <laughs> you, you really I'm not don't. doing anything <laughs> different in the game... Fair enough. I look like a prick. Well, though you are but, doing something in the different, if, in the different. I'm in the not game. because I'm still playing no. the game exactly the same as I would be if I wasn't in costume and putting an accent on. Well, no, no, but Lou wouldn't do what he said he was he was doing in EverQuest with the newbies if he wasn't role playing, if he wasn't immer being part of that. Immer not only that, but game. those newbies so, wouldn't, be, wouldn't be killing those guys because okay, there's no reward to do that. In the same vein, then what about moderators? Um, in going back to old times, like Quake Two, Rocket Arena. Were the moderators emerging gameplay because they were doing something that wasn't necessarily intended, but it's still within the the physical parameters of the game mechanics. You mean so the, the game admins? They, the... Yeah, yeah, because because they were setting the matches up and deciding. They were setting you a task, which was to kill the other player, which is what was intended all the fucking long. <laughs> but just because someone else is telling you to do it, doesn't mean that it's different to what the intention was. Interesting point. I'm not saying that the player that he's telling is is experiencing emergent gameplay. Yeah. I'm saying that. But all Lou is doing, doing it, is instead of the game telling someone to go and kill Bill of Swords, it's Lou telling him to go and kill Bill of Swords, and Lou's giving him some for doing it. Who is this Bill of Swords? He sounds like an interesting chap. Eyes are right tit. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I told him to kill him. Yeah. <laughs> Mm. Uh, something a law being passed. Yeah, I, I actually, I think I'm going to take role playing out of it and put that in room 101. You can't have that. Ah. It's, it's, it's still, it's still worth discussing within this topic, though. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I'm just saying that. I, I it's yeah, a tangential I, issue, but it's, it's not unrelated. But it isn't. I would agree that it's not technically um, an emergent gameplay thing. Yeah. Fair enough. Well, it is, it is kind of, it comes under the issue of player choice, that really. That's in terms of like, well, they've given you, say type it in an accent, well, they've given you the ability to type text out. What you type in that is entirely up to you, and they deliberately gave you that freedom. That isn't emergent, they? that's part of... That's what I'm saying, it's not emergent. Is, I'm saying yeah. that, that's the example that Lou gave, is typing in a, a Scottish dialect or whatever. Well, they gave you the option to type whatever you want. What you type is then up to you. They it, they didn't say that you could only type certain phrases and then so you in that in that different. vein then our leagues in in games are they is that emergent I suppose it isn't is it nah because uh, you know becoming part of a clan isn't part of the game is it but you you may go and do clan games because mm. that's the, like you're using the mechanics in the game but you're using them in a different way so that's a, a kind of a role playing isn't it I suppose but real yeah. <laughs> I see. Yeah. Role, role playing to me is just the amount of investment you choose to have in that particular game. That's entirely up to you, yeah, isn't it? You can role play to the degree that you want or not. That's not really emergent. Now, interestingly, in those games, in in I think all of them um, that I've played, they, there's there's something called out of character chat where you can basically say something that's out of character. So they they're assuming that your default mode of interaction with the game is is a role playing context. And if you want to say something, it's a role-playing game. Oh my god, I'm getting loads of lag. Then you would type that out of character. So they do give you a mechanic for not role-playing. 
and assume that you're already role playing. What what game is that in? Sorry. Well, that's EverQuest, but I think World of Warcraft has that as well. Yeah, but what what, what? all MMOs do that? It's yeah, a do. role playing game. The assumption has got to be that you're playing a role. Unless your character now, in World okay, of right, Now we're getting into the definition of what a role is in a game. Because <laughs> is a role being the gamer? Or is your role being the character in the game? Or is it becoming the character yourself in the game outside of the game? Something that Metal Gear Solid 2 was just starting to touch on in the last bit we were playing as well. When he said, this is a role play game after all. The writer was like, game? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That whole who's the avatar player character scenario. My head hurts. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I knew this was going to make everyone's head hurt. I, knew, I, I, it's, I, a, it's just that I, kind of I, thing. I feel like it? I've got a very clear <laughs> distinction in my head of what. I, just, Any, I think I know exactly what it is. I think, but I, I think, think we've anything, all got slightly conflicting views of what it is. Anything, Lou, by the sounds of it, in a game is what you yeah. think emergent gameplay is. Anything that involves you interacting with a computer. But that is might be the crossing, way I play. crossing the be... road in Frogger was emergent gameplay. <laughs> Not crossing the road in Fragger. Now that's emergent. <laughs> oh, that's having that's gone. Deciding to stay on that Just side of there. the road forever. I'm a frog. I don't belong on the road. I'm going to stay right here. That's role playing, well, though. Deliberately jumping in the river because I think frogs belong in the water. <laughs> yeah. Why is it punishing me for being a role player? I'm an amphibious creature, for God's sake. This is not a problem for me. Skimming a frog <laughs> over the river like you, you would a pebble. No, that's, that's going too far. <laughs> Uh, maybe it's just the way that I play games. I tend to play a lot of games, and I tend try to try and not do the things that I'm meant to do in the game. And that's where I get most of my enjoyment out of games when I feel like I'm doing something that wasn't intended. Right. That's so why I'm always the person who, like, when I first played Skyrim, before I even got to Whiterun, the first city, I tried to climb up the bloody mountain in the middle. Yeah, me too. <laughs> the wrong it's side. Just so you look up and like. Ooh. And I do that in all games with mountains. It's like, okay, I can probably get to the top of there. And it's only when I walk into an invisible wall or the game suddenly crashes or, or, or f through the mountain or something that or I realise, okay, I wasn't of, meant to do that. One of the mob spawns that's an infinite number of levels above you and <laughs> it just whacks swats you. Knocks you off the mountain. I think on my first go Skyrim, actually, I, I, I've done the same thing on, on, on the way to Whiterun, went straight up the mountain. And got rendered by a dragon in a much <laughs> a much smaller scale. I you've seen how I play games when you've been watching me play Metal Gear. I try and do everything before I do the thing that that I'm aiming for. I try and go around the room and check everything and make sure. So I'm are, happy. We, are we looking for emergent gameplay? Are we looking for ways to do the game that isn't outside? It's like the Stanley Parable really plays on that. It's it tries to it tries to kind of hint that this is the way you should go but it also tries to hint but you shouldn't be listening to me you should do the other thing no and i deliberately did everything the opposite of what i was well, told to so do. did i but that's so the point I. of the game that's what the yeah. game is intended for you to do if you followed what the narrator says all the time it would repeat itself over and over and the game would become so repetitive you would eventually go down the wrong route anyway Mm. Unless, I think unless that... you were literally someone who follows every single letter of the law all the time about everything. I think the likes of us, um, well, us three, Sam, I can't really say because I've never really seen you play any games, Sam. <laughs> yeah, um, call yourself a gamer. I, but I, uh, I'm sure you'll be the same because you're from the same sort of era as we are. Whereas the games that we used to play were full of bugs and we used to take advantage of them. So I think subconsciously now we try and do the same thing in modern games. I catch myself trying I, to do things and thinking I shouldn't, really shouldn't be doing this, but I'm <laughs> trying anyway. Speaking for yeah. myself, I look at it as more of a case of I want to get the most out of the game that I can because yeah. it, let's say you, you're in um, a really good example of this is, is uh, a game like Dead Space where you, you click the, the right analog stick and it goes boop, boop and it puts a little line on the floor that, that points to your directive and goes off. And so you go, right, that's where I was supposed to go. So my immediate reaction is to turn around and go the other way and go as far as I can in the other direction. Not because I'm trying to break the game necessarily or find an yeah. emergent mechanic, because I want to see what's over there. I want to see where it's not yeah. being and told to go. And if there's, there's any secrets there, if there's the goodies over there, am I going to get something? Yeah. Am I going to have a different experience? I just want to get risk the money's worth at the game. That if you go towards the goal, then once you get there, you might not be able to go back. Yes, yes. and you might so, yeah. That's I mean, a I've been playing problem, through Diablo uh, 3... For the uh, well, for a few hours uh, recently, and as soon as you get the wards where you're supposed to go, you see like a flashing gold ring, and as soon as you say you go, not back the other way. Yep. 
Go and until go you've explored of, everywhere possible. Yeah, unveil that bit of um, fog of war. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. then you go back to the bit you're supposed to. One, once you're satisfied that there's nothing else in this area that you can do, collect, kill, whatever. And it's yeah. a pain in the ass, and I hate myself for it because it takes me so fucking long to play games <laughs> because of it. Some games now. Now um, again, I'm going to bring it up because it's it's one I've played all the way through recently and didn't really enjoy any of it but i played it for my wife basically uh, the dead island games and uh, uh, dead island uh, one towards the end of it i just all the side quests just ignored them totally ignored them and just plowed through this the main quest in order to get to the end and then all the way through the second one i think i did maybe two side quests and just plowed my way through it and it still took me 20 hours to to complete it just doing fetch quests over and over that just depends if you enjoy the, that particular game or not, though, doesn't it? <clears throat> I don't mind fetch quests in interesting worlds like Oblivion, but there's something about that that world that's just a bit repetitive, I think. I don't know. don't know. Steve, do you remember when we used to play A Link of Doom and we started to try play um, with monsters? So it was a, a co-op deathmatch, we used to call it, I think. Yeah. That was quite interesting, because like, we would... We would, would, would you class that as emergent? In that we were playing... We weren't playing it the way you meant to play it, and it, it actually didn't properly work. I mean, when you died, the game restarted, I think. So it was <laughs> just sort of a brilliant, just sort of a brilliant emergent gameplay. Go on. Um, I'd say that was intended. Intended for the, the, the developers intended you to play deathmatch with monsters for it to not work properly. We mean like us playing as characters with monsters in the level. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure that was intended. Because you can do it on the PC version. You can play Deathmatch with monsters, but in the PlayStation version, you could only play co-op. And every time someone died, the level restarted. I know, but so then you that... couldn't really have a proper Deathmatch in it. The weapons didn't respawn. But we still played it anyway because it was fun. Cause you oh, could, like... I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. If, if yeah but we had died... an option, didn't we? I mean, like, we started the game. This is on PlayStation, the original PlayStation. Yeah. So it's not as if kind of like... We went in the command line and set up a you know a server we weren't supposed to be playing. It was an on, an option within the game menu. But it was an option to play cooperatively. Yeah. Yet we chose to play it in deathmatch. Yeah, but then the game the so we do things, allowed us to kill each other. So we do things like we'd have like a minute to get to a certain point in the map and then we'd allow to open fire. So yeah. we were making our own little game within that. That's emergent. That, I would that, say that is as that, well. That I, definition right there is emergent because you, uh, in fact, it's exactly what I was just thinking about with this other example. Um, it, because you have basically taken the, the the game and kind of put yourself within some parameters, and then the, if that uh, wasn't intended, though, surely wouldn't the game programmers have turned off friendly fire? Yeah, but that also makes it interesting to play in co-op because you might actually have kill each other. Yeah, fair yeah. enough. Fair so enough. What about fair the, what about when um, when we all play worms and you you spend the first ten turns again parameters that oh. that are set by you and your friends the first ten turns setting your base up yeah I the same goes for civilization for example all right we'll do we'll have another five turns and then we'll Ceasefire. attack each other or whatever yeah yeah but we'll do it without something that's put into the game you know there is a mechanic there for it but we'll we'll just say it to each other. Okay, I'd agree with that. So, I mean, the emergence of playing Worms, using a few, you know, you've got infinite yeah, dynamite to start off with, so you mm, use a few to blow some Is that not the same out. argument, though, as having minecart races in Minecraft? Well, I think it is, uh, maybe. Sorry, in, in Minecraft. Uh, in, in Minecraft. <laughs> Just say this, Minecart races in Minecraft. I remember, I'm I'm just I'm just hope so. I remember yeah. doing one of those ceasefire games of Worms, the original Worms, which is the only one I've ever enjoyed. I never liked the sequels. And Steve made this huge base that was dug into the side of a mountain with loads of girders and stuff. And he put mines all the way along all the girders. <laughs> and then on the first turn where we dropped the ceasefire, someone fired a bazooka at the top of his base and all the mines dropped down on top of his head. <laughs> I also Wonderful. remember that one, though, where it was, it was another one of our friends that had made a base, but there was like a thin section that was only like a pixel thick of wall. It was still a physical wall, but for some reason I managed to bungee swing through it. Yeah. And then shotgun him to death. <laughs> Probably SAS style. Is that emergent though? Because you didn't know how you did that. That's just a, a kind of a glitch, well, isn't well, it? I it's, mean, it's a freak it, accident. In Worms, the original Worms, the emerging gameplay aspect of that, I think, was being able to bungee swing. Yeah, there was quite, there was quite an art to that. and it was There was an art. It was difficult to master. 
and it was something that wasn't intended because if you could do it right, you could completely manip- you could you, you could uh, take ha- over the game. Hang on, hang on. No, no, the the bungee was part of Worms One, though. Wasn't oh, sorry. It? Um, yeah. it was the grapple swing where you fire. Sorry, a I, I, the, the bungee didn't come until Worms Two. Sorry, yeah. the the, then, the grapple. I, mean, I know what you meant. Yeah, you do kind of like you'd pull in, then push out on the upward yeah. stroke, and you yeah. keep doing that, and, and then you eventually you get enough momentum to do a full loop. In yeah. which yeah. case you could swing right over the other that, side. That's that. part of the gameplay. That's play, emergent though. gameplay. No, it isn't. No, that's because part of the gameplay. <laughs> it didn't intend you to be able to do that. How do you know you couldn't that? Do it, that... Nah, she couldn't no, do it. That's, worms too. It, it, everybody could do that. It was the. There was some people to it. Yeah, some people were yeah. better. And you couldn't do it in worms too. I was quite good at it as well, to be fair. The, the remove that element worms. in Worms 2, so that to me tells me that it wasn't intended. And it gives you a massive uh, advantage over people who couldn't do it. Hmm. You, you're right, you're right, because there were people that I played that couldn't do that. But It was know. like learning to swing, wasn't it? You were, mm. I mean, you could traverse the entire map as long as you were careful. I, you know, I got the you f- didn't same, land too hard. I got the same feeling from doing that bungee exploit, or whatever you want to call it, to doing bunny hopping. It's the same kind of precision timing and, yeah. you know, getting that. So maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's that learning. Maybe that's what defines emergent Certainly gameplay. You've got a, you, you learn an exploit, you do it once, and then you can you can perfect it. Maybe that's yeah. where emergent gameplay comes from. I keep going back to the, the bunny hopping thing and talking about it being analog because it is very analog. It's it's learning to be faster. It's learning to, to do something which is quite hard, very coordinated thing which makes you faster than other players it's it's a form of analog that's beyond the typical analog that you get in these games and i love that i love the idea that you can put the effort in and be physically faster than someone yeah and you, you to be fair you can speed up and slow down while you're doing bunny hopping as well yeah. so it's you not like corner. you just speed up and then you can't yeah, yeah and then you can't slow down yeah it's very hard to define it's very hard to define um, someone in chat has mentioned: Is it a linear style game emergent, or does it have to be dynamic? Well, that isn't the that isn't really what defines a emergent gameplay. I think we've already established that gameplay. I think um, or, or, or corpse that'll do. Corps. Um <laughs> I'm trying to say the O's and the zeros. Um, Corps. Um, we did actually uh, try and define it earlier on. We're still trying to define it an hour and a half later. Essentially, we, it's it's a mechanic, a game mechanic that you exploit to better or to um, give you an advantage. In, yeah, enhance your experience or give yourself an advantage of some sort. And that's kind but, of what I understand key, it to be. The key point of it is that it was not intended to be done by the developers. That's what yeah. makes it properly emergent, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, but. Like the quake, the quake example was the classic one that the, they okay, didn't want so, you to do the bunny hop. They didn't want you to do the rocket jump. Let's take uh, let's take tribes again and the skiing. All right, so the first game, skiing, um, which is basically if anyone hasn't played tribes and you're not aware of what it is, it's a first person game where you've got a jetpack. There's vehicles. It's quite an old one now. It came free with Star Siege many many years ago. Um, Star Siege was like a mech game. But anyway, tribes, you were you were these dudes and you just flew around and shot each other in big bases and took over generators and things like that capture the flag all kinds of things anyway that um uh had a mechanic in it where if you hit a slope at a certain angle in fact you could do it at any angle but it better if you hit it at the right angle you could slide down the slope and then continuously tap jump which i'm i'm going for my a button instead of my space because that's my old uh, config You'd continuously tap jump, and you would, as long as you didn't jump off the ground, you'd just end up flying, and you could hit you could hit the bottom of a valley and then fly up the other side of the valley. We should really have got a video to show people how, uh, yeah. how that works. I'm um, Simply speaking, um, there's, there was a bug in the game where when you press jump for a single frame, you had no friction. So if you kept spamming jump, you basically had no friction, and you could keep going faster and faster as you ro- rolled down these hills. And then when you're flying through the air, you don't lose any momentum. So when you hit the next hill, you gain even more speed, and it just keeps going and going, and you end up going miles. But and it was really handy because the uh, the size of the maps in tribes quite they were enormous. Uh, yeah, and it was quite unique for the uh, for the time. Were absolutely huge. Well, the the thing the thing that I was mainly mentioning is that 
they brought it into Tribes 2 and Tribes 3 as a key that bound, so you just held down the ski button. That's no longer emergent. That is that is an intended mechanic in the game. Yeah. I imagine they did that because they couldn't reprogram it. I'm actually showing a video of some, like a ski map, where they've got a, 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 a like a, a racetrack, essentially, that you could fly around corners and up in big, massive distances. And this is all done by exact timing. This, I mean, Lou would love this because it's kind of like speed running. I'm just catching. Oh, I've, I remember playing this map at the yeah, land. Yeah, I've got it. I think there was somewhere. a dodgy, dodgy bit on the uh, the slope where you could get caught on it and stop and die instantly. And this is just by this is just by um, <sighs> using your rocket boost or your jetpack at the, the right times, um, hitting at hitting things at the right angle, making sure that you you're jumping when you should be jumping, and yet there's actually no valleys involved here, so you don't actually need to hit a valley. Or uh, paste that link in the chat, Chris. Which chat? I can't because we're we're live. Oh, Chris, I love that. I, I remember playing this at the LAN. I remember being up at three o'clock in the morning trying to do this map and dying on the first turn every time. That's how hard it was. Because I was pretty good at quick two jumping, but this was crazy. It was just, it, it was a different type of jumping altogether. Yeah, I mean, it is a lot. A lot. Just because you could bunny up doesn't mean you could ski. There is oh, a, no, there was, no, there was, I didn't mean that. There's, there's uh, maps like this for Counter-Strike, um, for Quake. Even Quake Live has uh, jump maps in it. So these are quite a popular emergent thing from these games, uh, racing and going fast. There's a mod oh, for Quake 1 called Quake yeah. Race. <laughs> I remember us all trying it because we'd, be, we'd troll each other. We'd basically like shoot each other off the side of the, the platform and stuff. Yeah, or wait for someone to go past. And that was emergent gameplay in an emergent map. And they were having fun knocking each other off the course. I'm trying to find some tribes one footage of people skiing that isn't a specific ski map, and there isn't no, any. <laughs> that, that it's it not... became so big that it just it became its own subgenre. Tribes yeah, a ski ramp extreme map, bloody blah. blah. Yeah. But yeah, I had, even... I had that same issue with the rocket jump. I was looking for rocket jump, and all I found was custom maps that were designed to be rocket jumped on. And it's like, oh, for God's sake. Yeah. Yeah. It shows you that people love these mechanics though. It's not it's not just a passing thing. People enjoy the emergent mechanics that come out of games. Well, why do you think that is though? I mean, I think it's because it feel it almost feels like you you it's again that thing that I get out of games where you feel like you, you're exploiting something, you feel like you're doing something that wasn't intended. You, it's a bit naughty. You feel like I've ah, smarted them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like I'm really clever. I've figured out how to do this. I love that. I really love that. And I love that you can put the effort in and get even better at it. Yeah, I, I, that's a legitimate. Um, I mean, there's literally two, there's two games that I I would, and I've mentioned them both already, uh, that I would consider myself really happy with classing some of the mechanics as emergent gameplay. And that's Quake Two and Tribes. They're the only two that I can actually sit down and go categorically: the skiing in Tribes One, and the bunny hopping, and the circle jumps, and the rocket jumps in well, Quake Two are there's, emergent gameplay. There's really subtle things. There's something that uh, Greg was telling me about in uh, Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Um, the way that the very top-end players play the game is that when you're moving, even if you're moving just a little bit, your aim is really bad. The accuracy of your weapon is really bad. But if you stop dead, then the accuracy increases by quite a lot. So what pro players do is they'll run forward then they'll tap backwards to stop themselves dead and fire and then move forward again but they'll do it so fast that it's like literally stop fire stop fire stop yeah. fire mm. and they get really good at it that's a kind of an exploit in that what the yeah. game was intended for you to do was to stay still crouch somewhere and shoot people and what these people are doing is keeping on moving and just stop themselves just to fire I is think, that, I think is that skill? Is that emergence? Is that a bug? Is it an exploit? I think that's what a is bug that? that needs fixing. Well, it's not not going to be fixed because that's how Obviously that's not, like no. uh, integral to the game now. That's how you aim in that game. It requires skill to use the same way that a bunny hop requires skill to use. That sounds like it's just I'd a perspective say that was issue. That's, yeah, I'd say that's emergent too. It's not. It's, it's not any different in principle than bunny hopping, really, when you think about it. I think with any game where you've got this kind of comp this this intense yeah. competitiveness, you're going to find people. You're going to get people finding these exploits, and certainly in games with older engines, like uh, you know, uh, Global Offensive, which is run on Source Engine, which is an old engine now. They're going to find these things, and they they might get patched out. But I think I think Valve 
feel that this is such a hard thing to learn that it's worth keeping in there. Whereas if it was something else where you could just do something and always headshot people, then it'd obviously get patched out. Yeah. As, do you know what I've just been reminded of as well? Because um, you asked us about Metal Gear Solid emergent gameplay. And this is something that they've kept in at least up until Metal Gear Solid 3. And I think I even told Chris to do it in one of the episodes. If you equip and unequip your gun and keep pressing it when you want a noisy surface, it makes your footsteps silent. That that's a bug though. That's that that breaks the game to me. It doesn't break the game. You just get to sneak past the guards a bit more easily, and they haven't taken no, it out the, of two the, or the three. Develop, so the developers have made quiet surfaces and loud surfaces, and they put them in spe- very specific places in order for you to make noises in in the right places, and and that's part of the game. I mean, that breaks the game if you remove if you exploit that. Here's one for you all. Um, are you all familiar with rushing in um, RTS games? Rushing? Rushing, yeah. That's no, where you basically you, you get a load of low-level units and just throw them at your, your opponent within the first few minutes yeah, the and swap them and kill them. You don't give your opponent enough time or, well, enough time basically to build up resources or enough strength to attack you. So you've got games like Supreme Commander where you've got four tech levels and it ticks, it'll take the best part of an hour to get to the tech four stuff, the experimental stuff. But most games, uh, pro games, will last 10, 15 minutes because it's all fought in tech one. They just spam each other with low-level units and swamp each other. That's come about um, because that has been found to be the most efficient way to play the, to play the game. Even though it's not the intended way to play the game, It's in, the intention is that you get right up to the top level units and you have a massive war with nukes and stuff never gets there uh, the intention is to have a battle with another person utilizing the technology that's available to yeah, you with that last 10 minutes or an hour you're still using the game as it's intended you're not doing anything differently true but invariably what happens is that you never even get to see three quarters of the game because well, you do if you don't play twats yeah well that's what, how everyone plays because that's the only way you can play competitively I don't if you play go, like if you... yeah so much case you don't play competitively Exactly. You, yeah. you you play it with friends or on your own against the AI at a pace you're happy with. It's not all about competitive and how fast you can do no, things, isn't. you know. No, I know, I know. Lou it is all about speed these is, days, is. And it, which is quite ironic. God bless his girlfriend, eh? <laughs> <laughs> um, your right hand these days. <laughs> Palmer Henderson is just fine. Um, and her five beautiful daughters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, like I say, I do like to to go for these things but I think that is kind of I don't know if that is kind of on the verge of emerging in that no. I don't think so I don't think I'll give you that one anyone who plays the game for long enough will do that tactic well, because it is the tactic. one that works no because tactic, it's all about enjoyment and I played Supreme Commander and I played it with you guys and any RTS game 4S game I'm not into swamping I'm able to do swamping but I don't enjoy it so no. I don't do it because that doesn't for me, I'm spending time playing a game so I want to enjoy it, not because I want to defeat X. Yeah, yeah. I'm the same here. I'm not a partic- as I said before, I'm not a particularly competitive person, so it doesn't bother me if I win or lose. Really, I, I do just want to enjoy the experience. Yeah, I mean, I re- even though we were, it was really shady that last game of Civ that we played. I really enjoyed <laughs> the fact that because <laughs> you're paranoid as hell. So were you though? You were setting all oh, your troops up and getting I ready. Thought- I had about five military units. You had about thirty. I did have thirty I because five, I thought you were going to attack me. So yeah. I was, I was lining them all paranoid. up ready, ready for you to attack yeah, me. And I thought, you know what? You I'm starting to run out of space here. I'm going to have to attack him and get rid of some of my units. <laughs> yeah, I think um, I think the interpretation of the developer's intentionality is is kind of one of the trickier things about this, isn't it? Because a lot of what we're arguing about here is, did was this intended? And that seems to be the general like litmus test. Is that if it wasn't intended, then it's emergent. If it was, then it doesn't count. So it, don't things know, like what don't, you're talking about. I disagree yes. because what Lou just said that he, he's right. It isn't intended for people to swamp swarm people in games. In, in RTS but it's within, games. It's, but it's within, it's within the parameters of choice that you've been afforded in an RTS game. It's real time strategy. So that's your real time strategy that you've just employed. All right, all right. You know what I mean? They put that in there. It's the same with the role playing thing earlier. I mean, like, it's, uh, it falls within the element of choice that they gave you at the beginning. Uh, like Warcraft, for example, um, the undefeatable combo oh, of the, uh, the demon hunter and the hippogriffs. That's not emerging gameplay. That's, that's you just being a cunt. Un- <laughs> <laughs> Admittedly so, uh, <laughs> but it's not emerging gameplay. That's just being a cunt. <laughs> that was awful. I don't know if you're aware of this, Chris, but we used to play Warcraft 3 all the time, and Steve won every game by doing the same thing over and over. 
I, I just stopped no, it wasn't playing. Every game. I just not play with him again. Oh, sorry. Yeah, That's there was like, two games uh, where he didn't do that, and you didn't win. <laughs> so, so my tactic in tribes of of going invisible in tribes renegades rather of going invisible, dropping loads of silent bombs on everything in the base and exploding them all at once. Honest, is that honest, emergent? Because I honest, well, it's I don't know if it's emergent or not. Probably not. not emergent. It's, it's a tactic, but I, I, you know, as much as I uh, I piss and moan about stuff like that. I shouldn't have any reason to do so. If it's in the game, then you should be able to do it. And I think that's something that we probably haven't covered yet and something that is quite big is cheap tactics in games. Mm -hmm. You know, is that emergent? Uh, probably not. It's probably just a strategy, but people really have a problem with it. Like something uh, cheap. Tactics. Yeah. Oh, why are you using that gun? That gun's so yeah. overpowered. Well, it's in the game. It's been in the game for years. The you can use that gun on me if you want. All forms of gaming, though. Yeah, uh, there is. Whether it's playing pool, whether it's playing football. You know, whether they're playing squash, tennis, there's cheap tactics that you can employ in any competitive activity. And the skill becomes in how do you counter the cheap tactics and they exactly. don't work anymore. Exactly. That, I mean, look at the look at the um, fighting uh, competitive thing. I mean, that's not something that any of us are into. But, you know, I've played a few fighting games just generally. And there's always that cheap tactic of, like, you know, just that, that there's always like a certain punch that if you just get them in the corner and keep punching them, yeah. you win well, every round. Most frustrating like things with any beat em up was always when you'd play your friend who never had the game. So you'd be <laughs> trying to do all these really yes. complicated moves and they'd yes. just be hammering the B button and then you like, you. well, you're not playing it. Yeah. But they are. Yeah, but <laughs> we have not spent time <laughs> playing it. We don't know how to play it. We're just defending ourselves from your eliteness. Eddie in Tekken 3, for fuck's sake. Yeah. Just spinning your Rasta, kicking you in the head constantly oh, for the entire God, game. Yes. And all I've got to do is press one button. He was on the demo, wasn't he? He was yeah. him and one of, and the, yeah. one of the girls. Ling Xiao. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ling Xiao. Yeah. Yao. Ling Yao. That's she's it. my favourite character. Yeah, she's pretty I, cool. I wasn't a fan of Eddie, but... I love Tekken 3, actually. As a fight, as fighting games go, that's probably one, one of my favourites up there. It's a great game. Jin, Kazama all the way for me, but... Yeah. Eddie, for God's sake... If a, if a beat beat 'em up is done right, you get the kind of Ken versus Ryu thing. Then it can be sublime. Yeah. But when you get the, I don't want to say cheap tactics because I was just going to make a point there that I don't think cheap tactics exist. If they did, they get patched out. They they counted as bugs, or there's counters to them. I think it, I don't yeah. think any game could exist without. I don't think any game could exist if there was a genuine cheap tactic that always there's, worked. There's loads it of cheap tactics that always work. I mean, you've already got to go on to a. a a public Call of Duty server and just mm. wait to get sniped, which will probably take about three seconds. But that's not a cheap tactic as such. That's just the easiest way to start out in the game, but you can soon is find... Because what if you crap with a sniper rifle? If you can't yeah, shoot but anyone? The thing is, pe people gravitate towards sniper rifles in these sort of games. They always do. Because the one-shot in... kills, mainly. Yeah. And they can yeah, hide. Like, hide. Because the important thing to them is the kill count at the top, not the fact that they've had fun playing it. Uh, yeah, they just want experience. They're, they're, they're grinding, essentially, yeah. in those games. Yeah. Battlefield's the same. In Battlefield 3, there's there's a, pretty much any open map that you go on, there'd be some bastard three miles away on a mountain shooting at you. Yeah, but there and are tactics to avoid that, and I've played a lot of Battlefield 3, and, and uh, you know what the, one of the most satisfying things in Battlefield 3 is? Is managing to get to that sniper and stabbing him in the face. Or put a satchel charge on him. And yeah, something like that, because he's still laid down and he's in the same place, like... Going left and right. I, get, and he, oh, I love it. I love it. I love that stuff. <laughs> but that's that's brilliant, though. He, I bet he's like, you bastard. I can't believe you've just done that. It's so cheap, stabbing me in the back. But yeah. He just but he'll want to do the same times. thing again. Yeah, of course he will. In the same place as well, quite often. <laughs> or campers is another one that people hate. In, in you used to get duty. campers in Counter-Strike all the time, the original one. In... Yeah, I don't have a problem that's... with it. Camping it's, was a big thing back in the it's day. It's not very sporting, is it? It's not very sporting because, I mean, the main advantage is that you're not making any noise and you can kind of yeah. sneak up on someone. But, again, well, it's let's be honest, in the game. No matter how perfectly you program your game, you're never going to be able to remove the human, a.k.a. cunt factor of, <laughs> yeah. of the players. You're just not going to remove that factor. This episode's very cunt-heavy, isn't it? That's, that's a fourth, <laughs> by the way, guys. Actually, I well, said everyone else has on. said it. I wanted to say it. <laughs> I'm usually quite. I haven't you want to say it, it, Chris? Thank you very much. No, I'm. I'm going to keep my <laughs> mouth to myself this week. Thank you. Is very your much. mother watching? She is. Well, she might do. Actually, she has watched. If you, hi, mum. <laughs> she, she actually she turned one on hi, the other Chris's week. Mom. She turned one oh, the other week and uh, and she said, "Oh, I watched your show. Didn't know anything that you were talking about at all. So I just turned it off and watched X Factor or something or whatever she <laughs> put on. She doesn't watch I X Factor. Mate who um, watched about well, five minutes of an episode on YouTube. Like he, he, he um, sent me a message saying, "Oh, you're famous on YouTube." Blah blah. blah. Obviously, yeah. pissed. He went, "I watched about thirty seconds of it. I had no idea what anyone was talking about and turned it off." 
Yep. Well, we don't care because Woo Potato Power understands us and Mythalore understands us and yeah, the other guys in chat. Yeah, it's all about It's all about the loyal it's fans. Thing, isn't it? We love you guys. We love you. We do love you. We love you lots. Not as much as we love ourselves, but, you know, close. Yeah, we love ourselves more, otherwise you'd be on the show. Yeah, yeah, I w yeah. We do love you still. Right, are we Are we done? I think we are, yeah. I think we're, uh, I think we're just treading over all ground, down. Yeah, we? Yeah, we are, and I, I don't think any of us agree on exactly what the Merchant <laughs> game is. Oh, but but I, got... I'm kind of cool with that, I like that. I'll tell you what, let's each one of us sum up exactly what we think. So let's start with Sam, unless Sam had something else to say then. I was going to say one more thing about, as we talk about the, the endless sort of patching of games, and is that going to move into all different genres, and is Emergent gameplay in fact going to eventually become a thing of the past? Is it is it not long for this world? Do we think? I, I kind of well, think that it, it will go away unless people start hacking it. But then hacking is it's not emerging. That's hacking it. I think the only place it's going to continue to exist is in the indie world, because that's the only place where you, you you're going to get people trying new things. Or you get direct access to the developers who can take feedback from the community. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So let's let's do this and let's not interrupt each other. Sam, give me your definition of emergent gameplay. Um, emergent gameplay is taking an advantage of something that's in the game uh, that the developers did not intend you to do for your, for, for, as a means to your own ends, whatever they may be. That's what it is for me. You're taking advantage of something that's there, present in the game that the developers not intend you to take advantage of that's a, that you want to get for your own purposes, whatever they may be. And give me one, that your primary example. I'm going to pick the one that you're all going to pick, but it's the easiest one to pick is something like the rocket jump or the bunny hop from Quake. Those were used to move faster and get to places in a way that the developers did not originally intend for players to do. So it allowed you to reach places before you could, you're supposed to be yeah. able to reach them, yeah. And you can use it to the ends of multiplayer, speedrunning, whatever the hell you want. It's just there to be exploited. By the way, for those of you who don't know which one of us Sam is, because none of us are talking, he's, he's the one right above me. Just, to, just in case you've spent the entire show going, where's that voice coming from? Um, Lou, then, go on then, give me your definition and an example. So my definition of emergent gameplay is doing something in a game that is seemingly unintended, either by the developers or by the designers of the game, um, especially if it involves exploiting something, and especially if it's something which requires skill to do. The, the more clever it seems, the more skill is involved in doing it, the more satisfaction I get out of it, and the more I consider it to be an emergent part of the gameplay rather than just a part of the gameplay. Um, and the example I'm going to give is, again, what Sam said. I think the buddy hopping is a perfect example of that. It is a, a small mechanic which is exploited to really unlock the potential of the game to the point where I think it defined the game. Cool. Steve? <clears throat> Probably just saying the same thing with a different way but I'm going to say my definition of emerging gameplay is you are, um, manipulating a mechanic um, in order to help you achieve something in the game that was not intended not achieve something, sorry that's kind of the wrong way around uh, manipulating a mechanic in order to, to do something that the programmers didn't intend you to do i.e. increasing your speed, getting a longer jump distance um, getting to places that shouldn't necessarily be reached or getting to places quicker or via a different route, maybe. Uh, the example I'm going to use is... I'm, I'm going to go back to the Worms 1-1 one, one with the uh, uh, the grapple hook because that was something that, if you could do it, give you a massive advantage to the point where I think we actually started... Uh, we played a few games where we disabled the grapple because it made a certain member of our friends very upset every time we did it to him. Yes, you could do it. <laughs> Love it. Tough titties, you're not coming round again. Go on, go and cry to your mum. <laughs> um, well, my definition, again, is very similar to yours, but I will phrase it the way that I see fit. Thank you very much. Um, nah. I really don't know. I really, I really can't define this because, because it is such a grey area, I think, for me. I can't... I, I'm not going to sit and... Do what you guys have just done. So there. <laughs> that was your so idea. You asked us to do something, and now you're not going to participate. Chris, in it it's emergent. Just, Chris just did some emergent <laughs> gameplay. <laughs> you thought emergent I was part of the team, but no. Chris did that so he could reach the mega health quicker. <laughs> that was it. Yeah. That was it. 
<laughs> well, anyway, thank you very much, everyone, for watching. Um, sorry for those of you who just, uh, just appeared. We are just about to sign off. This uh, episode will be on YouTube shortly, and uh, as you may be aware, we've just been talking about emergent gameplay. Um, lots of... Uh, Lots of examples in here, but mainly Quake, Tribes, and Worms, I think. <laughs> Essentially, that's what we've talked about for two hours now. Um, so, yeah, thank you very much, everyone, and uh, we'll catch you next week. See you later. Bye-bye.